Hi, this is James Amphol Capital, and today I'm here with William Hubbard to talk about a new deal called Patios of the Patios of McKinney. Uh, so, William, welcome, welcome to the show, and uh, we'll get started with just a little bit of an introduction on yourself, and uh, maybe touch on what you're seeing in today's uh, market. Yeah, James, uh, really appreciate you having me on here again. Um, um, always, always a pleasure, and appreciate. Appreciate you extending the invite here. We got a pretty exciting deal to talk about. So um, a little bit about myself. I, I work for CBRE on our multifamily DFW team. Um, I work directly with a guy named Chris DA. And between Chris and myself, we kind of cover the mid-market space for our, our entire CBRE team here in the DFW. All right. So, I mean, um, we're sitting here sort of in the middle of the summer. Uh, 2022. What what are you guys seeing, feeling um, in the market right now, just at a high level? Probably the same stuff you're seeing. Uh, I, I can't. It's a it's a tough time to be broker. I can say that. It, it just you know, as you know, we've we've seen the debt market that's historically been cooperating really well, kind of pivot on us, and so it, it has caused a little bit of turbulence. Um, it's caused, I think it's always tough in this environment when there's some type of adjustment period going on. I don't think our problem is things haven't really stabilized out yet from a debt perspective, as you know. So I think just people getting mentally making those adjustments into their model and then having to kind of underwrite a deal a completely different way than they were six months ago, it's going to take some time. It, I was talking to somebody the other day about this too, and it's interesting because I don't think the real threat is rising interest rates. I think it's more just uncertainty in the market. But once interest rates kind of flatten out and everybody can really understand where they are from a debt perspective, then you can do the math and you can actually articulate articulate the exact value of the property. So it's it's been a very moving target recently, I would say, but um, for the most part, everything's going through. We've had a few deals that we've had to work on stuff, but for the most part, it's been uh, it, it just chugging along. So, Yeah, I mean, um, when you're out at the property, we were out touring this property with a couple of buyers um, last week um, before noon is, is my recommendation uh, in Texas heat. So uh, if the, yeah, when you're out at the property, everything's good, right? Occupancy is good. Rent growth is good. Everything's good. So um, let's jump into this deal and talk about sort of where this deal sits and maybe give a little overview of sort of um, what what the upside is on this deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think Patios and McKinney is a incredible opportunity just because of really the characteristics and where it's located. Uh, the location has a lot to do with the performance of the property and, and the overall opportunity. So we're right in the middle of McKinney. We're, we're just a couple blocks south of 380 um, and just to the east side of 75. And we're right across the street from the high school baseball field. Um, McKinney, as we all know, has seen a massive amount of population growth over this entire business cycle. I think back in 2012, there was a population of roughly 125,000 people. Today, we're, we're a little bit north of 200. So um, I don't think that's that trend and that trajectory is going to continue to go that way. Um, on the supply side of the equation, that's something that we keep a heavy pulse on um, in high growth areas like this. Um, it's a pretty healthy supply pipeline. We have about 1,300 units across four projects are expected to be delivered in the next 12 to 15 months. And those average rents are going to be pushing probably past 2000 on average. So um, not to even, that's just on the multifamily side. And then not to even get into, which we talked about for a, way more time than we have today, everything going on on 121. I know uh, Jay Ray's doing the whole farm development, massive mixed use, and then uh, District 121 that um, Craig Hall is going to be is currently developing as well. So those are all probably what, three, maybe four miles to the south of the property, so. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I live up in Frisco and so to get up to this property took me, you know, 15, 20 minutes. 
um, along 121, and then you, you are forgetting like 380 is just going to be huge east-west corridor getting across sort of from Denton all the way across McKinney and Princeton and all that stuff. They're expanding that highway significantly. And so you're going to be at just the intersection of 75. You're going to be at the intersection of 380 and then be able to get down to 121 in the airport. So, I mean, in terms of location, it's, it's right in the right pocket. Um, maybe talk Even about- Even pushing up north, it's, it's interesting because we go to, we got a little place up in Bonham, just north of McKinney, probably 30 minutes away, and straight shot off 75. I mean, they're expanding the highway, almost leading right into Melissa. And there, there's developers now gobbling up land, planning on going ground up all the way up as far as Melissa, which is just crazy to think about. What used to be McKinney and, and Allen and Melissa, these kind of outskirts, some marks of DFW have been completely absorbed. And I would be, you know, I'll make the argument that they're probably the highest growth that we've seen throughout the entire Metroplex, so. Right, so you'll have plenty of, um, you know, new jobs, plenty of uh, workers, residents in, that want to be in this, in this pocket. Um, so here's some pictures of the property. Maybe this is not like your typical uh, multifamily. So maybe give people a layout of what they would expect to see if they came out to the property. Would. Yeah, the, the, the product type is very interesting. This is not too often do we get the opportunity to sell or come across a deal that was built in 1970 and has 12-foot ceiling heights, full-size washer and dryer connections, individual hot water heaters, um, massive backyard patios, hence the name patios and McKinney, um, and low density one story garden style walk up. So it's just, the product type itself has a very competitive advantage. They, it, you and I were talking about this when we were on tour the other day, it's kind of on the fence of a built to rent in an apartment complex. Um, each building, there's 15 on the property. It sits on over five and a half acres. Each building has four units, so it's kind of a, it's basically a fourplex, um, and it, it has very a home style feel. Um, each unit also does have a wood fireplace, and I know we're going to get into this in a little bit, but some of the interior photos you see here are of the, will emulate the 42 fully upgraded units that current ownership has, uh, has renovated over the past, call it two years. Yeah, so. Um... You know, I think maybe I should have went and looked at the deal two years ago when the seller, uh, just to get a before picture, but we did have some before pictures. And if you go out on tour, you'll see a classic unit, but they've done a fabulous job with just sort of taking this to the next level in terms of upgrading. But you can see in this picture, sort of you walk in and uh, the main, I guess you call it family room is, you know, 12 foot ceilings, but then maybe the bedroom is nine foot ceiling. So, I mean, it, it gives really an open feel to the entire thing. And then you really only have maybe one or two neighbors, depending on, I guess it's one or two neighbors, just depending on if you're on a corner um, of the property. So, and it's all first floor entry and with big patios in the backyard. So um, pretty unique offering um, that I think feels like a build the rent deal um, that a lot of people have been doing the last couple of years. Um, so maybe anything else you would wanna to touch on uh, in terms of CapEx that the seller's done or just the physical characteristics of the property? Yeah, if you, I can send you a COSAR report and you're going to get a kick out of this. Um, I think COSAR has some of those outdated photos and they haven't updated the, the photos to what it currently looks like. So if you go on COSAR, it looks much different than it does today. Um, aside from the value add perspective that we're going to get into here in a second, I mean, the deal from a deferred maintenance standpoint, it, it, it's very intriguing because there's, there's almost minimal to none deferred maintenance current ownership. Uh, when they bought it, they did a bridge execution. They infused the property with a little bit over 20 grand a unit and they took care of most, all the roofs have been replaced. I believe seven out of the 15 have been fully replaced. Then those other, um, call it eight, eight buildings. Those were all replaced probably five or six years ago. So there's no need to fully replace those. They repainted the entire property. Uh, they fenced in all the backyards and redid all the patios. They replaced all the breaker boxes. 
um, um, did a lot of landscaping work, fix up the pool. And then, and so, and then also they replaced a lot of the hot water here. So from a deferred maintenance standpoint, there's going to be minimal CapEx that should be budgeted for the steel. Yeah. And then all these guys, all the units have washer dryer connections, which I think a lot of people are worried about sort of on a 1970s property. Um, so there's no laundry room on the property, just uh, washer and dryer connections. So, um, yeah. so here's a unit mix. I mean, I think uh, what the seller's done a good job of is sort of figured out, all right, here's the classic rent. And then sort of here's the, um, what we think we can get on a renovated rent number. And I guess talk about some of the premiums that they're getting right now, sort of on a floor plan basis. Current ownership is doing a phenomenal job proving out the market on those renovated units. Um, typically when we underwrite the seventies workforce housing deal in, in the Metroplex, it's, we're really hoping to see a 150 to 200 unit premium. Um, here we're, we're stretching, I believe the average is about $558. That's according to the last one all that I received. An average between those renovated and the classic units within each floor plan, which they renovated a little bit of each. Two bedroom floor plans and then have two one bedroom floor plans as well. So um, on average, you're getting about $558 premium. Right. So, and then here's a map on the bottom of uh, just sort of showing the layout of the property, just sort of coming on off of White Avenue. You, you really have access to each um, building and then how, you know, 15 times four. So you've got uh, 60 units in total. And then with each building having, you know, one of these types of floor plans um, throughout it. So um, pretty straightforward uh, property and, um, let's just get into, all right. So we've done 42 of the units. There's 18 left. Anything else that you think the new ownership could come in and start doing? Yeah, this is where it starts to get fun here. This is the fun stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, we obviously highlight, you know, you got 18 units that are still currently in their classic condition. Um, all 18 can be renovated and do a copy and paste model to current, what current ownership did and achieve those rent premiums. Uh, additionally, you got full size washer dryer connections. Only 15 of those units have machines that the current ownership is leasing out. So we believe fair rent comps and things like that. We believe that there's an opportunity to maybe uh, lease out more machines to then pass on to the tenants and provide those machines for a premium. We've received a ton of requests from residences to install covered parking. Right now, we have a few spaces that are reserved parking for 25 bucks a month, but we have no covered parking. And that's something we get almost on a weekly basis. So I, I, would, I would probably put in at least, call it somewhere in the ballpark of 20, 20 covered parking spaces and see how you do there. We only underwrote that $35 premium on this covered parking. I think that's a little light. We're actually closing a deal here in two weeks in Plano and they're getting that's a 70s flat roof deal and they're getting $75 premium on cover parking. So you could stretch that up a little bit more. And then the current ownership has, I guess, ordered, they've done the same upgrade program across all these units. And so they've ordered a lot of the materials um, for these, for these upgrades. Is that right? Yes. Uh, they, they ordered the materials to do all 60 units. Obviously they've only done 42, but as we sit here and talk right now, those, the, all the materials for the upgrade packages for the other 18 are sitting on the property in a storage container. Uh, that's gonna significantly benefit the buyer because I know it, Windows, for example, is just such a delay and do the supply pipeline. It's, it's really hard to get your hands on appliances and windows. And so it's going to provide the buyer to really complete those renovations in a shorter time frame than it usually would. All right. Um, so patio sort of sits on sort of the southeast corner of um, 75 and 380. Um, talk about some of the comps and some of the um, maybe the, the best comp to this property. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because patios is so different from so much of the other properties within this pocket. Uh, we obviously we highlight most of all of them. Um, every single one except for a via north side is going to be your typical two-story garden style 
property. Um, and they're, some of them are achieving rents higher than patios, which is great. However, Via Northside is one that we're really, really looking at because it's just, it's only a couple blocks to the west on 75. We're on the east side. And Avia is the only other product that's one story, low density, uh, similar floor plans, and has a real similar feel to Patios and McKinney. So it's the same business model. They were built in 2018, so they do have the upper advantage, and it's a higher quality product type. So talking to the owners, they've been eyeing, where, and we've been eyeing where those rents fall with Avia Northside. And we want to make sure that we're offering Patios at a healthy discount. Um, but as we look on the right side of this page, between your one, twos, and threes, there's not only a healthy discount, there's a really healthy discount. And it, it, I think there's an opportunity to wide, to make, it's pretty wide right now. I think there's an opportunity to narrow it a little bit, especially on those two and three bedroom units. So um, organically speaking, I think there's still some rent growth to be had there. So even after you upgrade the unit and bump it four or $500, you're still, probably a couple hundred dollars short of a villa. North exactly. Side. So you exactly. still got cushion and, um, you know, anybody coming in, like I was just on a call and, you know, they're, they're just talking about new supply coming in um, and the cost of new supply being, you know, going up 15, 20% year over year. And so anybody building new supply, they're also going to have to charge, you know, rents north of this. So um, I think you'll have a pretty, pretty safe cushion there. And, and kind of, it's kind of similar to what we saw last year, James. I know you and I were together on many projects, but we we did Ranch and Joyce Lane together, and there was a very similar supply pipeline coming online um, within that surrounding with that surrounding property. And it was what we've seen is seeing these rents on this new product is really good to peg and rub up against because then you're never going to be at the same level for obvious reasons but it's good to ride their coattails a little bit. I think Avia, you have the opportunity to, and then other, other projects coming online within the next year or so, like Touchmark and the Florence and the Lux, um, those are all gonna be good to ride their coattails as they establish rents within the area at a higher level, so. Right, okay, so, um, so it's been running pretty well. It's pretty much full in terms of occupancy right now. Um, so talk through the Performa, and sort of where you know new buyers going to really be able to push um, either on rents or expenses here. Yeah, uh, a lot of numbers on this page. Don't know where to begin, but I'll just kind of summarize it <laughs> on, a, on a high level. Um, in our performance, we're growing rents two different ways. One is going to be organic rent growth. We look at where the rent is now, where the comps are, and where we can kind of move it in between. And then two is we're establishing a value add program, kind of what we talked about just a few slides ago. How we underwrite value add, and that's I think on the fourth or fifth line item down, is that we implement that CapEx budget within 24 months. So by the end of year two, all your CapEx, you're gonna be turned over, all those units need to be renovated, and you'll be getting those full premiums by the end of year two. However, those 18 out of the 18 classic units, there's four of them that are currently vacant. 14 of them are occupied, but they're only on a six month lease. So although we're underwriting to 24 months to renovate it, I, I personally, and I really believe that buyer and they probably will be able to complete those renovations in a much shorter time frame. Moving down kind of to the expenses. Um, I've been getting this question a lot on payroll. So right now, current ownership is self-managing the property, um, but they are contracting an out-of-state remote leasing agent that does everything electronically. She sets tours, she calls on potential residences. And then when they need a tour, the owners actually live up in McKinney. So the um, um, one of them will go and they'll tour the resident. I put that, they're paying the remote, they're contracting the remote leasing agent about 25,000 a year. So call it 400 a unit. How we underwrote it, we just didn't do any payroll in year one, but we choose the property management fees up to 6% instead of what they're paying at 285. So at the end of the day, it kind of evens out, but I think you get a pretty uh, a ex experienced boutique property management company to run the property and all the on-site operations around that 6%. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Um, 
And then in terms of, um, I know you guys have been on the market here for a couple of weeks. Um, have you determined sort of a whisper price or what sort of the, are you taking offers as they come? What's, what's the, uh, how are you guys doing the marketing right now? Yeah, right now we are, we're actually getting geared up and setting, we're going to be announcing call for offers tomorrow, which is Thursday. And um, it's going to be set for July 7th. Um, okay. Pricing at the end of the day is going to be to be determined by the market. So we are, we are accepting and, and we'll consider any, any offer that comes in the door. However, we are guiding 13 million. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I mean, we've taken, I mean, obviously the property could qualify sort of Fannie Freddie, um, you know, the leverage on that it's about 50% right now. Um, you know, bridge is definitely still out there um, on smaller deals. Non-recourse bridge is getting more difficult just with the floating rate aspects of it and just sort of where the Fed is taking interest rates. And so that that rate is creeping up to, you know, um, SOFR plus 425, four and a half. And so you're you're coming in at probably a 575, 6% to start on bridge on the non-recourse side, and then you're going to have to buy an interest rate cap. And then on the bridge recourse, which if you want higher leverage, this is probably where you have to go. Um, probably signing some personal recourse to get up to 70, 70 percent, maybe 75 percent, depending on the strength of sort of your balance sheet and um, any guarantors that sign with you. You can get probably up to 75 percent, five years fixed. We're seeing that come in about five and a half percent. You're going to get anywhere from one to two years I.O. and then it'll probably go um, 20 to 25 year AM after that. But the recourse bank option right now seems to be um, the flavor of the day, um, just seeing where uh, interest rate cap pricing is and then sort of where the leverage for Fannie and Freddie is. That seems to be where most people are, are landing until sort of the debt markets calm down a little bit and able to go back and refi with Fannie or Freddie or sell the asset as you have to step down prepay. So um, those are your options on the debt side right now. Um, you mentioned call for offers date of uh, July, seventh i believe and then um i guess any any final comments on just sort of wrapping up the deal no i th i think we covered it I, I mean for the most part um feel free if there if anybody has any questions you're more than welcome to contact me you have my email and this is my cell phone shown on this page um, um feel free to reach out to me anytime and, and james I, I really appreciate you having me on and talking about this deal and um looking forward to doing more business with you guys or at Old Capital uh, again soon. All right. Thanks a lot, William, for coming on. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate it.